UK Police Chief Joe Monroe told me they would have an increased police presence here on State Street along with the Lexington Police. So the festivities have seemingly been more controlled tonight as opposed to last week, but Big Blue Nation has still come out in droves to celebrate the cats moving to 6-0. I'm just trying to understand why you ultimately chose to, to do that. To save him from me. 23-year-old Shannon Gilday is now in the Madison County Detention Center after spending the day with investigators who tried to learn the motive behind the home invasion. Most Valuable Pets has a wide array of animals, from birds to bearded dragons, but the workers here say that losing just one of their precious pets breaks their heart. Trainer Eric Reed is back in his home of Versailles today after pulling off a long shot derby win on his very first attempt. I sat down with Reed to relive his greatest two minutes in sports and learn what's next for him and Rich Strike. With drinks like the Necromancer and the Zombies Milk and a free TV to win, I'd say these zombies' appetites are pretty satisfied. Well, maybe not. I gotta go. In Winchester, Jeremy Toms. WKYT. Garrett, I talked with Adkins for nearly a half hour at the jail this afternoon. She admitted to leaving her five-year-old son, but in the course of that interview, her story changed multiple times. I meant to leave him there with Patty. No, I left him there with Brad, didn't I? You've given me contradictory answers to the names of people you left him with in Colerain. So did you leave him with someone, or did you not? No, I didn't leave him with anyone. Heather Adkins is accused of abandoning her nonverbal, autistic five-year-old son in Colerain Township, Ohio, about 75 miles from their home of Shelbyville, Indiana. Hamilton County Police Dispatch. Hi, my daughter's boyfriend just came over. We live on Ravens Ridge Lane, Lane off of Gaines, and he said there was a little kid, like a little kid, out there on Sheed Road by himself, waving down cars. Ronald Reese was headed out to pick up food Thursday night when he found Atkins' son, saying he looked like he was in a daze as he walked along a busy road with no sidewalks. I, I immediately stopped and was like, wait a minute, this isn't normal. The child is now in the custody of Hamilton County Jobs and Family Services. Assistant Chief of Georgetown Police Darren Allgood says Atkins was arrested this weekend at a gas station in Georgetown for an unpaid fine dating back to 2011. The incident prompted emotional responses oh, from parents you know, like Reese years, and those so. in the Colerain neighborhood. I'm angry. If you didn't want to deal with your, your child or your son, take him to the nearest relative that, that you feel uh, is fit to take care of him. Well, it certainly hits home. I have a child that's nonverbal as well, and to think about him being alone is, it's, is very sad. Reese hopes this can serve as a wake-up call for Adkins. I'm just trying to understand why you ultimately chose to, to do that. To save him from me. Adkins is charged with child endangerment. The Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office released a statement saying these types of cases simply break your heart. Good. So my dad was a very, very poor soccer player, but he loved the sport. Growing up in the south of Sweden, passion for soccer came as second nature. It was a wonderful opportunity for the two of us to bond. And then I think you have a lot of friends in the neighborhood. Every opportunity we got, we were outside playing. But when Johan Settergren arrived in the States in 1997 to play collegiately for Cincinnati, he says he went through withdrawals. There were no games on TV. You could not. There was nothing on. There was simply no appetite for it. So I grew up in eastern Kentucky back in the 70s. People didn't talk soccer. We made the NCAA tournament at 98. There maybe were 200 people on average at our games. Now with uh, more you know, social media coverage, uh, streaming services, it's a lot more accessible than it used to be. Rick Roberts is a fan of German giants Bayern Munich. They've created a group called FC Bayern Kentucky. Now 150 supporters strong. Some come from uh, Bowling Green, from Louisville. Separated by thousands of miles from the club they cheer on, they still come together to watch on the big screen. They open early for us to come in for breakfast and uh, watch the early games. They share their shamrock home with several other supporter groups, like Everton, Kentucky. 
Everybody was trying to deal with the pandemic, and it was something that we could all kind of get behind. Started just last season, Everton, Kentucky has grown to include more than 80 footy fans, one string in a worldwide web of supporters. Everton has supporters groups all over the world, from Australia to China to North America. Across town at Mirror Twin, the American Outlaws Lexington chapter provides a similar outlet for fans of the Stars and Stripes. We had a, a weeknight crowd of somewhere between 30 and 40 people. But board member Kevin Collins and other fans say watching a game on TV pales in comparison to seeing one in person. It's unlike anything I've seen as far as the passion. Constant noise, constant action, drums beating. Settergren has seen that passion growing within his own big blue fan base over the years. You know, there's a ball when we beat IU in 2018. I think that's when we had 3,300 people here. Thousands turn up for a night under the lights at the Wendell and Vicki Bell soccer complex. He attributes it in part to more parents growing up with the game and passing it down to their children, just as his father did for him. It's made fans more knowledgeable, Good. and it's led to growth in the domestic market. When I got here in December of 2011, Columbus Crew was the only MLS franchise close to us. And now, of course, you have Columbus, you have Cincinnati, you have Nashville, Louisville City does a great job in the USL. Soon, Lexington will have its own pro soccer team. Settergren is excited by the prospect, as it could create a pipeline for fans to keep watching his players. Fans make connections with college players, and then all of a sudden there's, an, there's another venue where they can keep watching them. And to keep nurturing their interest, in the beautiful game. There may, be, there may only be one, two, three goals a game, but those moments, they feel unreal. Euphoric moments from grassroots levels up to the pros that can be made right here on the bluegrass. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. On Xbox Series X, I want, um, PlayStation 5. Six-year-old Malachi Roberts has a long wish list this Christmas. I want a guitar. But after spending the holidays in the hospital last year, his mom's only wish is that Malachi is happy this Christmas. For last year for Christmas, he had presents and stuff, and he let him sit for a couple days before he would even open them. Tomorrow marks a year to the day since Malachi was permanently blinded by bullets fired into his home on Katerra Trace. But a year on from that horrible night, his mother Casey says he's doing really well and making the best out of his situation. He's really the best kid. He has that can-do attitude. He never complains. We've all seen him riding his bike and he went um, to a sports camp and rode horses and wrestling. Casey he's says he's also doing so really well in school. He likes to go to the buffet and order crab legs and sushi. My reindeer's extra. I think he might be the reindeer. And occasional visits to the Kentucky School for the Blind help to show Malachi that he's not alone. There's a ton of people that's just like him. They take them uh, to like movies and show them how to, you know, operate in society with their cane. Casey knows many other mothers who have lost their sons to gun violence would love to be in her position, but she can't help feeling down from time to time. Some days, you know, I feel depressed or I don't want to go on because of the situation because he can't see. So the support from the Lexington community means a lot to her and Malachi. The prayers, the good thoughts, the donations, you know, people coming up in Walmart and giving us hugs. Like, he loves that. Like, we, we absolutely love it. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT.